Shall I, shall I just give the camera a quick nudge? And I'm recording my screen. But do you want a bit more? So what a shiny the... face. We're gonna just oh, yeah. shine it with a cushion. <laughs> Why don't you just go and make telly and do news and that? All right, let's do it. Hello and welcome to BBC R&D Explains, where we lift the lid on our big projects and chat directly to the people behind them. This is our fourth and final episode about a big project of ours called New Forms of Value. Catch up on episode three on that link, or here's a super quick recap of where we've been so far. What could people love the BBC for as well as radio and television? What would it look like if you had a single store for all your personal data? Over the next few months, we're gonna be testing out a whole range of prototypes with as many users as possible. This is where human values came in, for new ways of doing things, new ways of working, thinking, value first, being values driven. In this episode, we're talking about the internet, what might be wrong with it, and how we could help build a public service internet that works better for everyone. Bill Thompson with me again. Thank you so much for being here. Why exactly are we looking at the internet? What are we doing? Are we redesigning it? Why? Just why? That's a very good and pertinent question. And, and we get that quite a lot because it does seem, you know, why should the BBC care about how the internet works? The BBC obviously cares about how broadcasting works. And for many years, the BBC owned a transmission network, you know, sticks on hills that broadcast radio signals and broadcast television to people. And it was seen as you know, an understandable part of our business. And we still spend a lot of time researching broadcasting. Well, the internet is, a, is the medium that we use for iPlayer and sounds and news and all the other great services the BBC currently has. If you're sending stuff out over today's internet, then it has to go through a number of internet service providers, each of whom has its own kit and technology. It could possibly be being monitored while it's going out there. People are tracking it. We know that there are hackers and fishers and spam artists. There are all sorts of things happening on today's internet that we feel get in the way of the BBC audience's experience of our services. And so we've been working with a number of organisations that also care about the health of the internet to try to figure out what, a, what an internet that served the public would look like. And that's not to say there would need to be radical changes to, to what actually happens, but we want to ask the question. And we want to ask the question in, in two ways. The first is just in an engineering context. You know, the internet works because there are a whole set of international standards that make up something called TCP IP, the Transmission Control Protocol and the Internet Protocol. Together, they make bits move around between you know, a sort of web server and your phone, or between two computers, any two computers. The design of those protocols, those standards, was largely shaped over the last 30 years by the interest just of moving data as quickly and as, and as efficiently as possible. And other aspects like security or confidentiality or reliability or trustworthiness were not baked in from the start. So we want to ask, okay, are there ways to start reshaping those core internet protocols to make them more usable by organisations like the BBC that really care about those principles. And then we also want to ask about the nature of the services that are built on top of the internet and how they can rely on, how they can rely on the network itself to deliver services that delight, that entertain, that inform. Services that have been designed according to the human values framework, that look after personal data properly, using personal data stores that provide a whole range of exciting new experiences like augmented reality. So how can we create an internet which will sustain an organisation like the BBC in the future? And it's a big job. It's not just a job for the BBC. Many other people are interested in it, but it's one that we think we absolutely have an interest in, in, in taking part in, in trying to solve some of these really difficult problems. <laughs> So with me now is Ian Forrester. He's a senior Firestarter producer at BBC R&D. So you are heading up our work on public service internet, Ian. 
So you talk about the network layer. Can you, you know, pick apart some of the technologies that might be uh, involved here and some of the work that you've done so far to explore how we might exist on this on the public service internet? We're looking at stuff like the underlying network protocols. You know, um, what does that enable? What does that not enable? Um, we've been focusing very much on some of the decentralization, distributed networks, and federated networks. So centralized, a centralized model is that everything evolves, evolves around one thing. So when you go to something like Facebook or even the BBC currently, you go to this one place, and that one place is where all the stuff is. Now that, from a governance point of view, is kind of useful because you have complete control over everything. In a decentralized model, what happens is that you move the power from the central place to the edges, so to you. So you can actually have some of the data uh, locally, and you have control over that. A distributed model is where it's not that it's all just at the edges, it's actually distributed around the network. That's a much more difficult thing to, to do and understand, but it's quite powerful because that allows you other type of um, experiences which um, which we are not even aware of right now. But the, the point of what we're doing is to explore what that you know, what possibilities are not only for ourselves but also for our audiences yeah how can we empower the audience to have control over their own data and to make the choices which make sense for them okay so what are the next steps what are you going to be looking at exactly next to move this forward um it's also about reaching out to other partners it's about that bigger network so for example the w3c um the worldwide um Web consortium. World Wide Web cons- yeah. yeah, consortium. Um, they they have a lot to say in this, and they also have lots of partners. Um, and so, working with them, for example, would be a you know, a great thing for for us and for the web and our audiences. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, Ian. It's a fascinating piece of work. Uh, sounds like there's a huge amount still to think about, kind of early stages and working with partners to kind of define how this public service internet will look. Can, can, I, I, can I say something? Can sure. I say something, Emma? So I, I think, I think the, the thing I'll also add, is just to finish off, is that this is not uh, a defined thing. This isn't about the BBC deciding this this is about uh, a kind of a pool of collaborators working together to to you know to focus more on a public service internet to focus more on people and ultimately you know if you want if you if you listen to anything that we've talked about and can disagree or agree um get in touch you know that's that's probably the most important part of this this is not about us going away, screwing away in our lab, and then kind of go, da da, look at what we've done. It's not that. It's much. It's a much more open space than than that. Okay. And how for anyone that's interested, how can they keep up with the work that's going on? So we have our blog, uh, which is bbc.co.uk slash rd um, slash blog. Um, the the best thing to do is yeah to look look there. But also just to get in touch, you know, we have a Twitter account, um, you know, which is worth following. Um, we'll post more and more stuff there. But you'll start to see more experiments kind of popping up here and there, and they're worth checking out. Okay, great. Thanks so much, Ian, for telling us about the the work that you're doing. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> We heard from Ian Forrester there about the public service internet and the work we're doing to explore that. So this is an extended research programme, New Forms of Value. It's a huge body of work. Bill, where will it take us? Where are we going to end up? I don't know. That's half the fun of it. I have a pretty good idea, though, uh, that what it's giving us and what, what the amazing researchers and engineers and designers and social scientists who are working on these projects are doing 
are starting to map the territory. Because our real goal is to ensure that as the BBC makes decisions about what services it wants to offer, what programmes it wants to make, how it wants to reach audiences, it can do so confidently. And our goal is not to build those services, but to make sure that the decisions are made on the basis of evidence and understanding. And so public service AR and all the work we're doing about human values framework, the work around personal data stores and data stewardship, and the work on the public service internet all fit together as part of this larger picture of the online world. And my hope is that the work we're doing will enable not just the BBC, but other public service organisations to understand it better, to act bravely and, and correctly as they make very difficult decisions, and to ensure that organisations like the BBC thrive in this online world. Well, that's it for this episode and our mini-series all about BBC R&D's project, New Forms of Value. As always, let us know what you think in the comments. Like and subscribe. See you next time. Thank you.